Sup YouTube, it's your boy Slide Eight Fry here. You know it's funny, uh just a little bit earlier I received a comment from uh probably the only person who really hates my React videos because he thinks it's uncreative, it's lazy. Hey, I tried making original stuff, it didn't work. Um but I do have plans for original content and you know, it's funny because he hadn't commented on my videos in like, I don't know, like six months. But before that, he was commenting like once a month or something. And now he's back like he thinks he's special. Like, dude, nobody actually cares. People are actually actively seeking out React videos. You're not the authority on what's considered okay. So, because you don't approve of people reacting to other people's content, then people who want to watch react videos should not be allowed to watch them? Is that what you think? You ever heard of Mystery Science Theater 3000? That existed before YouTube did and that's exactly what they did. They watched movies and commented on them. It, it was, there was nothing original about that besides the commentary they added. It's fair use. Get over it. Judging by the title, Toys to Life, I think I know exactly what he's talking about. But oh god, it's gonna be a long one. Hey y'all, Scott here. I finally found a use for that 24 hours of spare time I just had. It's all been building up to this. I'm gonna be God, the first 24 year old one to be exact. I woke up yesterday and realized God can't <laughs> die. And I've never died before. So my first order of business is to bring wow. inanimate objects to life. I decided to buy anything labeled as a toy. Except that one time when you were talking about some kind of um, Square Enix game and a hitman just shot you. I guess you survived that. Spencer's gifts not showing those. I'm Spencer's gonna give them mortality gifts. because <laughs> damn it, if you were God, you would too! The hell do I do now? I'm over wasting <laughs> money, I can always sell them to get more. And video games are pricey buggers. I mean, back in the 90s, you'd be paying 70, 80 dollars to be disappointed. Eventually, console games went down to 50 dollars, then rose to 60, and then 70 again. But even with these prices, that's not enough for these companies. Do you think he's satisfied? Expansions, downloadable content, microtransactions, any possible revenue stream out there. These companies want them, but gamers know better. They're gamers! Many players have become well versed in these methods to get more money, so it's up to these companies to figure out ways to mask their money hungry tactics. Nah, I'm not trying to kill you, I'm just making eggs. And in 2011, something happened that changed the video game industry. None of you would be here without him. Something else happened, okay. and it was the start of a new genre leading to all kinds of possibilities in death. Toys to life. The idea of it. releasing a game for 100. I knew he was referring to Skylanders, uh, Disney, Infinity, and uh, the Amiibos. I actually didn't know about Skylanders when it first came out. My first exposure to this uh, Toys to Life thing actually was from uh, trailers to Disney Infinity that I watched on the... Um, I think I watched it on the Miiverse on the Wii U. Um... That was my first exposure. I actually thought Disney Infinity was the first, but yeah, now I know. Skylander started. Disney Infinity copied it. You're damn right. $100 that's incomplete and forces you to scan figurines sold separately to unlock characters already in the game's files? It's fucking <laughs> stupid. Let's do it! There has always been a lust for putting elements of real life into video games, mm. and uh, yep, that counts. Using a camera <laughs> to insert yourself or your objects into the game world, or even something as simple as character creators, it's just flat out cool and game designers know that. So, what if you had toys that you could scan into a video game and instantly be able to play as that toy? Great. Ready to die. The developer Toys for Bob had this exact idea, and they applied it to a reboot of Spyro the Dragon. Fans were outraged because Spyro doesn't need a reboot. He already had one two reboots ago. You see, Spyro is a pretty iconic character in the whole pantheon of gaming, but after the initial three games on the original PlayStation, 
we have nothing to lose. And thus, hmm. Spyro's Kingdom entered development until later being titled Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Hmm. Oh, that's a slap in the face. Not only is Spyro relegated to the subtitle, he's not even the main guy on the box. Yeah. It was a smart business decision, though. You can't deny that. It was pretty much a brand new franchise, but with Spyro as a selling point for those in the know. It also allowed Skylanders to be its own thing rather than acting like this was the next main Spyro the Dragon game. Yeah, Say what I you agree. want, but I think they did this in the most respectful way possible. You know, I gotta hand it to you. That was a really nice way to spit on that corpse. Skylanders <laughs> Spyro's Adventure released on October 16th, 2011 for Wii, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Nintendo 3DS, PC, and Mac, with a Wii U version releasing on July 12th, 2013, only in Japan, published by Square Enix. I'm sorry. So, how does this work? Well, first you spend $70, then wait for that return on investment. In the box, you get the game, three figures, some cards, and the portal of power. I've got a lot going for me, don't I? The portal requires batteries. We plug the receiver into the system, and there we go. I think we're up to this being at least worth $4. So let's pop a Skylanders figure on the portal. You can tell it's a Skylander by its disfigurement. Pick anyone you want, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you gave Activision money. That's all pretty instantaneous, and the effects in game do give the illusion that placing the figure on the portal ignites some sense of magic, even when I already understand how the tech works. Each figure has a near-field communications chip in the base, or NFC, which allows the portal to know exactly what's on it. Of course, the fun of the gimmick comes from having an endless amount of figures to try this out with. Uh, being restricted to just the three that come in the starter pack, it's like, wow, I can get past the menu. There is nothing you can do unless you put a character on the portal, and once you have 40 of them, you truly start to like it. So allow me to offer you Skylanders figures to purchase separately for only $7.89 per character. And to have access to all that Skylanders has to offer, you can have it all for the price of $225. Okay, well, maybe there's something to this game. Maybe each character unlocks loads of content if this is worth $225. Skylanders is a game where you move forward and beat up enemies. I'll let you sharpen my pencils for 50 bucks less. Skylanders <laughs> is about the portal master. Me! I control all 30-something Skylanders and can swap them on a whim. They're frozen in our world as toys, but through the game we can see them in their world, fighting against the evil chaos. It's a cute way to contextualize the toys to life mechanic, I'll give him that, but at the end of the day, Skylander Spire's adventure is a simple beat em up for children. Take that back, all the children say. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with it, in fact, loads of kids games are structured exactly like this, and many of them popped up around this time. There was mm. Disney Universe and Ratchet and Clank all for one. These are beat em ups with very simple level designs and controls that can be played via cooperative <laughs> multiplayer. They're perfect for kids who have thumbs and very little else. I mean, I find these types of games to be a little too simple and slow paced for my liking, so you're gonna need a gimmick to make it work. And Toys for Bob found it, being wasteful. You know, I'll be honest, I have been slacking off with wasting money lately. I don't think I'm in my prime. I need mentors to teach me how to be wasteful and appreciate a game that wastes so much plastic and money. I was once a chaperone for school dances, but then I realized I was contributing to society. Hi, my name's Jeb Jeb, and this right here is a Jeb piece Jeb. of shit. Don't you want to be like me, doing absolutely nothing in life, so there's more or less pressure to perform? Rex Moe's here and I do. We're the Waste Chasers. You're helping us by helping you be more wasteful. From this job, I bought 30 acres of farmland. What are you gonna do with it? We'll waste anything. Your time, energy, people. But according to our lawyers, we can't advertise murder on TV, so I'm obligated to say that we're kidding. Call us now to schedule your appointment. Confirm it by wasting money. This is the Waste Chaser. <laughs> Do we need gas? No. <laughs> Let's get some. You work for the Waste Chasers? I prefer the term, we work for the Waste Chasers. Uh, how well can you guys waste? Sign this. Why? <laughs> no reason. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Hey, see your problem? This wall's being utilized. I was actually wondering if you could teach me how to waste with this. Oh, that's what our entire organization was built off of. Waste Chasing was founded by our great boss, Dex, who believed our great nation wasn't wasting enough time, potential, money, mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. It turns out Skylanders was a perfect alibi. Hey boss, can we have some Skylanders? Yes, please. That's a lot of Skylanders. 15? 14, you ass. Aren't there <laughs> child labor laws? Legally speaking, it's better the child employs me than me employ the child. Wow. Well, what do you think? It's perfect.
Let's order another set to be safe. This is how you can get any mileage out of Skylander Spire's adventure, by investing in these dinky-ass little things. You can beat the main game here with just the included figures in the starter pack. But this is a game designed around having 30 plus playable characters. Only three is, by definition, not fun. Hey, in 2011, these were all only around eight bucks a pop, so not a horrible deal or anything. Mm -hmm. But these toys are pretty small, all things considered, and it's kind of hard for me to really want a ton of them when I have absolutely no attachment to these creatures. Mm -hmm. Other than Spyro, these are all basically original creations and some of these guys just look gross to me <laughs> not in terms of being badly designed and more so I wouldn't want to be eating while looking at them they all look like they belong on a pack of mucinex <laughs> and I don't get some of these names they're not even that was perfect they actually do look like they belong on that let me go back oh, come on right. that's too far back Back of Mucinex. And I don't get some of these names. They're not even names. One of them's named Lightning Rod. His parents were dicks. Then you have Wham Shell, Trigger Happy, Stump Smash. What the hell kind of a name is Slam Bam? My fucking name's Jeb Jeb. The characters and names are pretty take it or leave it for me personally. And while well, you can totally just pick and choose your favorites. Is Jeb Jab possibly named after that old comedy site? Actually, they still upload YouTube videos nowadays, but uh, I even have react to one of their, to, uh, some of their videos from last year. But uh, Jib Jab, like, is he named after that? And roll through the game. A Skylanders works best when you have basically every character at your disposal. You get oh. up to certain parts where you need a specific Skylander of a specific type. None other can unlock the gate. Oh, well, that's a smart business move and a little bit of a, well, I don't know, discrimination? <laughs> then when you die, you can't use that Skylander for a period of time. They have to tap out while you use another figure, and you can't use them for a while as they rest up. So, theoretically, you can beat the game with a starter pack, but if you die with all three of your figures, you just can't do anything until your toys come back to life, which doesn't happen until either A, you finish the level you're on, but of course if you used up all your toys, then B, wait like five hours for the things to recharge. If it were 30 minutes, I think that would still be egregious. Doesn't matter that much though, because the game is piss easy. I wish I didn't have to use that adjective, but hey, it just shows they gotta make urination harder. That's just <laughs> more incentive to buy more figures to have more and more chances to get through the stages. They're not forcing you to do it, but of course that's how an adult sees it. And I'm sure oh. kids thought they needed Ghost Roaster, their life depended on it. <laughs> we all see the gameplay like this. The kids see it like this. They may have overly simple gameplay that's aggressively monetized in a far sneakier way than something like DLC or microtransactions, but Toys for Bob definitely made each purchase feel magical, like the son of God. Can we crucify a purchase? The act of putting a Skylander on the portal <laughs> does feel kind of cool. It lights up in a certain way with the TV displaying animations that in tandem a create a portal. pretty neat effect. And after a Skylander dies, rummaging through your collection trying to pick the next one you play as, it has a certain charm to it. Sure, it's a far hmm. bigger chore than just the selection screen, which is entirely what this replaces, but it's kind of fun. You can play the entire game with a second player or battle them in a versus mode, uh, truly the best crotch measuring tool. The game was originally developed for the Wii with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions being ports, which makes this feel great as a Wii game and really sad as anything else. There's something about HD ports of Wii games to the Xbox 360 that just feel like naked mole rats. That 360 version is the only one that uses a wired portal, I assume for some technical reason. The Japanese only Wii U version is pretty rare, probably going to be one of the harder to find games down the line. Uh, the 3DS version is completely different. It's a bit more fast paced and action-y, probably a hmm. better game overall, though it's harder to appreciate the figures. Being more focused on portable play, you save a few Skylanders to your system, then can take it on the go, which entirely defeats the purpose of the figures, which hmm. had no purpose to begin with. I just find it interesting the game <laughs> out on 3DS. They had to create a specific, slightly smaller portal of power just for it, which might go out of your way to do that for a new IP. Oh. Skylanders was a critical and commercial success system then can take it on the go, which entirely defeats the purpose of the figures, which had no purpose to begin with. I just find it interesting the game came out on 3DS. They had to create a specific, slightly smaller portal of power just for it, which might go out of your way to do that for a new IP. Uh Yeah, that would explain that. <laughs> Skylanders was a critical and commercial success. It still were carrots. You don't see Dole bragging. I find it odd just how well Spyro's adventure. That Dole just did bananas. They do carrots too.
Ranger did in reviews. Lots of 8 out of 10s, which just seems really high for a game so hell-bent on ripping you off. I don't Man. care if you're the biggest Skylanders fan on the planet. That sounds like a military threat. How do you justify the starter pack costing $70? I think because I'm numb to the technology now, I just truly don't see how this is worth that kind of investment. Uh -huh. Though people were saying the same thing 10 years ago, but the portal glowed! But all this praise <laughs> meant this was a franchise worth supporting. They could have just kept releasing new content for this game. They actually released a few figure packs containing new levels to play in, which is kind of cool. No, so they decided cool. to follow up this game with a sequel just one year later, Skylanders Giants. You guys need some more Skylanders over there? As much as I need carbon monoxide. So he took that as a yes? Giants, wow, this <laughs> is no longer Spyro's adventure. He's not sh compared to the new guys. Move over, Spyro, make room for thump back. This game is pretty much the same shtick. Starter pack, game, portal, figures. The portal across all the home consoles is now completely wired, which isn't the worst idea considering a wireless portal was just another set of batteries to worry about. The main difference between Giants and Spire's Adventure is the introduction of the new bigger characters, whose figures are significantly larger, a size that I was hoping the regular Skylanders would be. They even light up when they're on the portal, which is a nice touch. The characters themselves? Bring it the stage. No! There are some regular sized new Skylanders figures that just work with giants, but I think the most important thing here is that all figures for Spyro's Adventure work in giants. That is pretty cool. That it is significantly cool. increases really cool, the appeal actually. of the game to me. Like I said, it is pretty fun. I'm sure this is obvious, but it gives you a chance, to, if you already played the first game, to actually play the second game right away because you have figures from the first game. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. fun to pick and choose a Skylander to use, and when you have that much more to choose from and you don't have to worry about compatibility, it just makes the concept work that much more. Now, mm -hmm. the game itself? Do you give a shit? No! To somebody out of the know on what makes a Skylanders game unique from the last, this was a pretty weak sequel. The toys are bigger, and so is my appetite for a better game. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, Giants feels more like an upgraded replacement for Spyro's adventure rather than a full-on sequel. For a series that was born from a gimmick that really carried the first game in reviews, to see Giants not do something just as magical feeling, it just doesn't satisfy me. You are a bitch to pleasure. Again, the game is fine, it's more of the same, but I feel like the Giants aren't anything more than just bigger. Like, how is this impressive? It glows! Giants on 3DS retains the wireless portal, so thankfully that lives on in the form of a Toys to Life game on a portable system. Please think about that. These were strange times. Play this on a bus. I don't think Skylanders Giants is bad. Mm -hmm. I think it's Skylanders Giants. It's probably a better game, but Spire's Adventure still takes the cake in terms of being the first to bring this genre to mainstream attention. Mm -hmm. Giants just feels like an add-on to the first game turned into a sequel. A sequel mm -hmm. to such an innovative game in 2011 was basically the same game with bigger toys. Well, if you want to get into wasting, you can't get much more wasteful than that. What if there was one <laughs> More bigger toy. Stop, I'm on duty. Why you guys wasted over there? Oh, Mark. That's not enough. Hey, I got some beer. You can get really wasted if you have that. Well, the first Skylanders for the next generation of consoles, the PS4 and Xbox One, though it's still released for everything Skylanders Giants came out on. Skylanders Swap Force released in 2013 and was actually not developed by Toys for Bob. This time it was developed by Vicarious Visions just to get <coughs> these games out on a yearly basis. Who better to trust with Skylanders than video game developers. This is something Activision does with their yearly franchises like Call of Duty. You need to keep them coming out every year, but to give each game two years vicarious visions just to get these games out on a yearly basis. Who better to trust with Skylanders than... <laughs> well, I don't think it's too far removed from James Pond on the Sega Genesis, but still, that's really funny. <laughs> Video game developers. This is something Activision does with their yearly franchises like Call of Duty. You need to keep them coming out every year, but to give each game two years in development, you split it across two teams. So while Toys for Bob works on the next game, here's Swap Force. Firstly, my god, they upgraded the visuals. It was painfully obvious Giants was built off of the first game. So to go from this to this, 
is monumental. Even on the last gen systems, it's a phenomenal looking kids game. Yeah, Incredibly nice, detailed yeah. with great lighting and popping colors. It's great to see that because this series did so well, they actually invested more into the productions themselves to make them better and better. The main gimmick of this game is the That's new good. swap force figures. You can take them apart and swap their bodies amongst each other, connecting with little magnets. And then when you put the figure... As Woody said in Toy Story, thank you, Sid. Because <laughs> that just automatically made me, made me think of how Sid takes toys apart and puts heads on different bodies. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> on the base, they'll appear in the game with the swapped bodies. That's awesome! This is still insanely cool. The sheer creativity behind this concept just adds to my enjoyment on top of the fact that it just flat out works. This is the coolest, most genuinely creative gimmick they've done yet. The figures themselves are cool to mess around with, let alone the fact that you can pop them on the portal and see them like this in-game. Plus, all previous Skylanders are compatible, including the Giants. The game feels huh. better to control now, which is probably definitely because of the addition of a jump button. Yeah, the first suit, you couldn't jump, mm -hmm. which I think added to just how slow and simple they felt. I mean, they were all designed around not jumping, but it just feels restrictive. Like, I want to jump, but I feel like the game doesn't trust me. Come Come on, why not have a jump button? This just feels like a waste of the controller. You have all these buns at your disposal, but now it's being more utilized and it doesn't feel like a waste. We're done here. Swap Force uh -oh. was a huge upgrade. It's not incredible by any means gameplay wise. It's still Skylanders where you fundamentally just move forward and beat up enemies. You need certain Skylanders of certain types to enter certain locations. You talk to this weasel to save this weasel. But this game really impressed me on multiple levels. The presentation, Dark creativity, spiral. a jump button. This game has it all. I'm not head huh. over heels in love with this series. I have problems with it and the gameplay doesn't grab me, but I understand why this captured the hearts of millions. And with Swap hmm. Force, this is a game I can totally Totally get behind. However, 2013 was a pretty massive year. Many companies noticed the success of Toys to Life, and Here Skylanders was no longer the only franchise in town. Disney Infinity. Yeah, there it is. He has ears, you know. <laughs> Disney Infinity, the first major competitor to Skylanders, alongside Pokemon Rumble U releasing that same year. Wow, hmm. a Pokemon Toys to Life game on Wii U? Digital only? Tiny figures only available at GameStop? The game is bad. Some may toss the term mist. I played this game on 2DS and it didn't require figures. I guess it was just a portable version that didn't require them. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a different game. It has the, you know, the toys though. This opportunity around, I prefer the term Pokemon Rumble U. This is Nintendo we're talking about, okay? If they have the opportunity to monetize Pokemon to take advantage of children, well, first they shoot you in the face and then they do that. But when mm -hmm. you hear Pokemon toys to life, you just kind of expect that to make money. Problem was, Nintendo forgot to flip the switch. This game stunk. It was just a mindless button masher. And that's saying something because I just played through Skylanders games. But this one has no actual level design. They're just arenas. The toy functionality hmm. was completely superfluous. I think Nintendo just did this to test the waters. If they truly wanted to go all in, they would have incorporated toys to life figures with an actual Pokemon game, not where dreams come to die. <laughs> become a lawyer. So Pokemon Rumble U is the third entry in the series, and much like Skylanders, this was all about moving forward through levels and beating up all the enemies. The difference was, uh, Skylanders it, it's better. I don't fucking know. This is just too simple. I know Skylanders can feel like a button masher, but Pokemon Rumble is a button masher. And instead mm -hmm. of fleshing out the combat a little more or giving us better level designs, Rumble U keeps the combat the exact same and removes all the level designs. It's 18 mm -hmm. goddamn dollars. Well, the figures aren't needed, but could have been bought at GameStop in these blind bags. You scan in and can play as them. Upgrade their moves with coins you earn. Uh, you can save a certain amount of coins and in-game data, then bring your figure over to a friend's house to play on their Pokemon Rumble you chokes on them because they don't exist they weren't great toys either they were cool in the sense that the pokemon rumble series already represented the pokemon as little low polygonal yeah because uh i mean those who have a wii u did you know anybody else who had one <laughs> i didn't well i knew two people but not neither of them were my friends well actually one of them there was a third person he was he is my friend but he went from having a Wii U to not having one to having one to not having one, but yeah. Toys, but in real life, outside of the novelty, what kid is gonna wanna play with this? They get more <laughs> enjoyment out of spray painting a Dixie Cup yellow. Hey guys, it's Pikachu. I mean, I guess the designs can be kinda cool sometimes, and for four bucks a figure, 
I guess it could be worse. But only being available via blind bags exclusively at GameStop. Activision's pissing their pants. <laughs> I will say it was cool to finally have a game utilize the NFC technology on Wii U. That was built into the gamepad, so... Actually, I gotta ask, why didn't Skylanders take advantage of that? The way you had it mm -hmm. built in, it would have been a cool extra feature to let you just scan your Skylanders in any way you wanted. God, stop complaining. And instead of fleshing out the combat a little more, oops, or giving- Oops, went too far back. Scan your Skylanders in any way you want. They would have saved a lot of money doing it, doing the uh, Wii U gamepad NFC Raider, because you know, having to use the portal means you have to spend money on manufacturing those portals, too. Is that my coffee machine? Huh. Should be fine. I already drank some coffee. Like, I could turn it off, I guess. God, stop complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just angry. Pokemon <laughs> Rumble U stinks. I would be more careful about saying that due to how ruthless the Rumble U community is, but they're just like the Shakers. There's not many of them left. Other companies were attempting the Toys to Life formula around this time as well. Notably, Ubisoft was thinking about incorporating a feature in Rayman Legends on Wii U, allowing you to scan in random things like hearts, I, rabbits, Ezio from Assassin's Creed. Did, did the feature was cut. Remember. This concept yeah. requires a lot of investment and commitment. I said this before. I've said this before. I'll say this again. I think the Wii U version of Rayman Legends is a definitive version. I love how, when you get to the parts where um, you switch to that green guy, and then there's another green sp sprite guy or whatever, he walks forward by himself, punches enemies on his own, jumps on his own, but you use the touch screen on the gamepad to have that sprite guy remove obstacles can't do that in any other version of the game. Of course, this game was originally designed for the Wii U on its own. I remember playing a demo of it um, in late 2012 at a GameStop, um, and it was meant to be released in March of 2013 as a Wii U exclusive, but because of how poorly the Wii U sold, uh, Ubisoft postponed the release date to also make a 360 and PS3 port and release all of them and I think it was September of 2013. Didn't like that we had that us that I didn't like that as a Wii U owner I had to wait for everyone else's game to be ready but whatever I get uh, I looking back at it financially it made sense to do it that way for Ubisoft because we the Wii U didn't sell very well. Commitment. Without that, you get Pokemon Rumble U. So obviously, if you're a big company with loads of disposable income and a wealth That's of right. iconic characters, a Toys to Life made sense to try out, hence why I'm gonna bitch. Disney Infinity <laughs> was announced in January of 2013, and everybody was kind of like, yeah, this makes total sense. You take a concept like Skylanders and you apply- So, because I didn't know about Skylanders by the time Disney Infinity came out, I was actually really mesmerized by it, especially since it was Disney characters. I mean, Jack Spar Captain Jack Sparrow was included. That's actually pretty amazing. You see Buzz Lightyear, Woody, um, and, uh, you know, so many other Disney characters of the time, and um, I was amazed by it. I never got the game, never did, but I was very curious about it, and I was really dumbfounded. I was like, wow, it's amazing, because I didn't know about Skylanders. I didn't know Skylanders came out a couple years before. I, I learned about Skylanders later. Why the sh that isn't whatever the f and it's poised to print money. And mm -hmm. all these iconic characters in the same game interacting with each other? Mm -hmm. It's like a dream come true. When the game released on August 18th, 2013, I'm sure everybody thought, damn, the boys together at last? <laughs> okay, so Disney Infinity isn't exactly what I think many wanted from a Disney Toys to Life experience. Instead, they tried to do something more unique. Like a tapeworm is pretty similar to a pinworm, but the tapeworm went off to do its own thing. They're both still parasites. Disney Infinity was developed by Avalanche Software, who okay. already created the Toy Story 3 video game. This was one oh, of the okay. most high quality movie games of that generation. Really? The story mode truly felt like the film came to life with the quality visuals and sound, but more notably, the game included a side mode entitled The Toy Box. This was huh. a large open area with different missions to tackle, which then let you customize more and more of the world. It was a really cool addition that they didn't need to do, but showed how much they cared about creating a robust video game based on Toy Story. This was probably the most iconic feature of Toy Story 3 the video game as this was what most would talk about. So having that developer create a spe Huh. I really missed out. 
See, I've played the first Toy Story game. I originally played it on the Game Boy, uh, which was kind of a poor man's version of the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis version. There were far fewer levels. Um, but I later got it on Super Nintendo, and I was pretty amazed by it. It's a really good game. Really damn good. I also liked A Bug's Life on Game Boy Color. Um, that was also a lot of fun. Much, much later, like just a few years ago, I got Toy Story 2 on Game Boy Color, and the game sucked. <laughs> like, how... They should have had to be the same formula as the first game, just you're playing as Buzz Lightyear instead of Woody. But instead, it's like the controls are really bad. And the music's really bad, too. Whew. I was very disappointed in that. But it's cool to see that Toy Story 3 was like more than just a game based off a movie. It had its own world. That's That's awesome. I really missed out. Most movie-based games are just not good, but sometimes they're really good. GoldenEye, Toy Story 1, I Like the Bug's Life, um, and Toy Story 3. Wow. Impressive. Quite impressive, I must say. Spiritual successor to Toy Story 3 in the form of a Disney Toys to Life game, it just made sense. The problem is, that led Disney Infinity to feel more like a new Toy Story 3 game with everything left behind a paywall. Disney Infinity follows a bunch of Disney toys doing as Disney toys do, be purchasable. That's the explanation behind the crossover. They're old toys, which is also why the characters are designed this way. A little blocky and simplified, it works mm. though, and helps tie all the characters together under a unifying art style. Mm. The starter pack comes with Sully from Monsters University, Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles, and Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. That's cool. Wow, what a diverse lineup. Two Pixar characters and Johnny Depp. Disney Infinity was already a little disappointing to actual Disney fans, and there wasn't a lot of classic Disney characters at play here. Out of the 29 characters released, over half were Pixar characters, which, hey, are big parts of Disney's brand, but it's not called Pixar Infinity. Did I not see Donald Duck there? Was it just... Let me see this. D there has to be more than that. Like, out of the Disney classic characters, all they have is Mickey Mouse. There's no Donald Duck, no Goofy. I mean, of course they're gonna have Elsa from Frozen. That movie was brand new at the time. Oh, they got uh, Bar Captain Barbosa from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean as well, right next to uh, Mike Wazowski. And uh, I keep forgetting the villain's name from The Incredibles. I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. It's a pretty diverse cast, but. Yeah, I mean, it's Disney Infinity. He's right. Why, why is Mickey Mouse the only classic Disney character? There should be Donald Duck, Goofy. Huh. Minnie Mouse, I think, would have been a good choice, too. Oh, wow. Um, what, what was his name? I forgot his name, too. God damn it. From uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3. <clears throat> I forgot his name. <laughs> And uh, Lone Ranger, the, the the Native American from Lone Ranger, also played by Johnny Depp, just like Captain Jack Sparrow. He's here. Of course, Lone Ranger was a pretty new film at the time, too. Oh, there's Anna from Frozen. That's, that's also cool. I think Kristoff from Frozen would have actually been an interesting choice. Oh, they actually got the Lone Ranger as well. He's between Elsa and Mickey. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of them are either modern Disney or um, um, Pixar. Like, have more characters from decades ago. How about Aladdin? Aladdin, oh, the genie. Those would have been awesome. <laughs> Even Jafar as well. Uh, Quasimodo might have been cool, maybe. Um, Hercules. Although, let's face it, he'd be OP, wouldn't he? <laughs> um... Bell, the Beast, come on, Beauty and the Beast, come on, Ariel, except, well, I guess, no, Ariel would work, because could, you could make her be the human, the, the, the human Ariel, the one when, when she got human legs, that would work, <clears throat> um, I don't think this movie's remembered as much, but the Fox and the Hound, um, 
I don't know, there's, there's just so many classic characters they could have used. Hey, Mulan would have been great, too. Pixar characters, which, hey, are big parts of Disney's brand, but it's not called Pixar Infinity. Mm -hmm. I'll be like if half the Smash Brothers roster was from Fire Emblem. Oh. Uh, it's a joke. It's not half of them, but there are a lot of <laughs> fighters from Fire Emblem, which is an intelligent systems property, not Nintendo, although I think intelligent systems is like a branch of Nintendo or something some kind of second party like how laboratory but even then the other half of the characters a lot are from pirates of the caribbean yeah. and from the most recent disney properties at the time mm -hmm. tangled frozen phineas and ferb they all deserve to be here i just think it's lacking more classic disney stuff like the lion king that, yeah. aladdin even just regular ass mickey mouse we have sorcerer's apprentice mickey but fucking goofy has to wait because we just had to get the lone ranger in here <laughs> who the hell remembers the lone ranger 2013 movie Wrong answer. I think this was an issue right off the bat. <laughs> Disney Infinity didn't feel like a celebration of Disney, rather it felt more like a promotional vehicle. Like there's a reason the Monsters Inc. characters aren't from Monsters Inc., they're from Monsters University, the 2013 film released two months before Disney Infinity. You're telling yeah. me I get a Holly Shiftwell figure from Cars 2 while f***ing Goofy's on the sidelines? So the character selection is a little weak and a little too marketing centric in my opinion. <laughs> a Disney Toys to Life game was obviously going to have some characters involved just because they were in recent movies i just wish it was a little more balanced but that's yeah. not all as the starter pack also contains this what does it do cleans a toilet but very poorly this is a story mode for disney infinity dub play sets they have this transparent look to them all and they fit on this huh. portion of the disney infinity base you get three play sets and one with the starter pack each based on one of the included characters the pirates incredibles and monsters you story mode each of these are completely separate experiences meaning they have no effect on each other they're separate stories based on separate movies and because of that you cannot use characters that weren't originally from said movie in that movie's playset you can't use sully in the pirates playset or mr incredible in the goofy one because goofy isn't in the game it's just <laughs> the characters from the original movies in that movie's playset oh my god finally woody and buzz at the same time somebody call ripley's believe it or not and tell them i don't this just kind of defeats <laughs> the purpose of being a crossover being titled disney yeah, infinity it's thing. even lamer considering these toys to life games were pretty popular as co-op experiences uh, something a parent could play with their kid and out of the box even though you got three figures because of this limitation you couldn't play multiplayer in any of the play sets you had to go out and buy another monsters character another incredibles one another pirate one. The playsets themselves are fine. They're perfectly reasonable five-hour adventures in their respective universes. It's like an Incredibles game within the game, and while they all still use the same engine, each playset plays pretty differently, going for different styles of gameplay, though they all still feel like Disney Infinity. But five hours per adventure is pretty beefy, especially considering you get three of them right out of the box. The problem is, they can get a bit repetitive and tedious, and they don't have the same level of polish a game like Skylander Swap Force had. Mm -hmm. Visually, again, it was fine, but nothing crazy to write home about. The gameplay, as well, was fine. It was mostly just mm -hmm. complete the mission for this character, beating up enemies, collecting currency. It was a very standard, but fairly quality kids game. My problem is, this is what Toy Story 3 was, and I didn't need to buy all this sh Instead of being this epic crossover, mm. Disney Infinity more so felt like an excuse for Disney to make shorter, shittier movie tie-in games and just put them into Disney Infinity. It's way cheaper. That's you can just bad. use all those assets and that game engine and everything. Instead of a Lone Ranger or Monsters University game, it just make a playset for Disney Infinity. And you know what? I don't think it's much of a coincidence that the amount of Disney tie-in movie games went considerably down after Infinity's release. This was more of a platform for Disney games and content, not a Disney game in of itself. I wish there was just one big... Jeez, they even had that, like, witch or whatever her name is from Pirates. They had four different Pirates of the Caribbean characters. I think that's a bit excessive. You don't need that many characters from... I mean, yeah, the first movie came out nearly 20 years ago, but, like, it's, it's still a pretty new franchise in comparison to a lot of others campaign where all the Disney characters were playable and interacting and everything. I feel like with trailers and even the box art showing everybody all together, it kind of leads to disappointment when it turns out these characters all being together in one game, it's kind of pointless. Like imagine if Smash Brothers was exactly the way it is, but you could only play as Mario characters on the Mario stages or mm -hmm. Zelda characters on the Zelda ones. Like, yeah, it's still a crossover technically, but you're not taking advantage of it. Though I shouldn't speak. 
Why are they level five? Put them at level nine, dude. Come on. Too soon because Disney Infinity features the toy box. So unlike Toy Story 3, this one is far more focused on being basically a game engine. Create your own world or edit a pre-built one. You can basically create your own small <laughs> games in this mode. It's very impressive and you can use any character you want here. Toy box is definitely what you'd want. Like Elsa needs a gun. She just shoots her eyes. <laughs> want to buy Disney Infinity for. You can just run around with a friend and attack each other, place items and vehicles down. It truly does feel like you're a kid playing in a toy box. You can even buy power discs, which were blind bags filled with little bonuses you could place on the base for use in the toy box. Eh, this is just getting a bit greedy at this point. There's some cool stuff here. I love the fact you can stack a few power discs on top of each other. You're not limited to just one. But like, Come on, this game costs $75 at launch and you're keeping a truck away from me? That's fucked up! And because they're in blind bags, you're gonna be stuck with extras, which is just irritating. This game is already ass expensive. Expensive as ass! You're already clogging everybody's living room with these figures, Thanks, so James. now you're gonna do blind bags of objects that have no reason to be sold separately? My daughter choked to death on power discs, and to make it worse, they were doubles! Who the <laughs> hell wanted the circular ones? These just gave your character stat boosts, and it's like, great, because I didn't feel self-conscious enough! The angular ones are way cooler. They can affect your toy box's background and terrain, and give you really fun and cool objects, vehicles, hmm. and weapons to play with. Numerous character figures released were only playable via the toy box, the characters with no playset in the game, which these felt like kind of a waste. Like, it's nicer in the game, but you can basically only play them in the level editor. Ooh. It just reaffirms my opinion that they should have had one big campaign that all the characters were a part of. I commend the effort of creating multiple campaigns for certain franchises, but it makes the whole experience feel disjointed. They already made a game called Disney Universe, where you play as generic characters solving light puzzles and beating up enemies, all in different Disney worlds, which hmm. feels way more to me what Disney Infinity should have been, which is just nice. Skylanders. I don't know, man. I just feel like, unlike Skylanders, this game felt much more like the figures were just unlocking content in the game rather than, oh, we're bringing the character into the game world. Just look hmm. at how long it takes for the character to loan when you put it on the base. Hello there. Want to come join me for some more fun? Magic! Disney Infinity is fine. I just think the concept of a Toys to Life game with Disney characters spending <laughs> so many of their IPs had so much potential. And while what we got was an all right game, I can't help but think something more in line with how Skylanders operated would take advantage of the crossover in figures so much more. However, much like Skylanders, Disney Infinity released on everything it possibly could have. Wii, Wii U, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, even iOS and PC. A few months too early for iOS. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, though it did get a 3DS version, subtitled Toy Box Challenge. I didn't sign up for this! It's a party Mario game party. with a gimped base, <laughs> only one character in geometrically confused plastic. The playsets give you game boards now, so it's literally a Mario Party game. You roll the dice, play a minigame. I assume this version entered development way late in the game, too late to create an actual adventure or a version of the console's toy box, so they cobbled together a party game, which frankly has no right being on a portable. This is just miserable. This was just a way to get another game called Disney Infinity on the 3DS in a short period of time. Outside of that, this game has no business existing. Well, what more mm. could you possibly ask for? A duck? <laughs> that would hit the spot. Donald Duck. One year later, in 2014, Disney Infinity 2.0 released. Wow. F you! You know, they had a chance to fix any and all problems I and many others initially had with Disney Infinity. Spider-Man? Instead of fleshing out the Disney portion of Disney Infinity, 2.0 opted... Technically, Spider-Man is actually still a Sony character, so that's pretty amazing. But then again, uh, the deal that... Disney and Spider and Sony have put together to put Spider-Man in the MCU probably has to do with that. To go in an entirely new direction, focusing on Marvel superheroes. I can't blame them, it was inevitable and does make the crossover that much more cool and exciting if the damn characters worked in the placements. With a name like 2.0, I would have assumed this was just Disney Infinity 1, Plus Ooh, more, which six. isn't really the case. I mean, the toy box, yeah, that's basically an expanded version of the first games, but none of the Disney Infinity 1 playsets work on 2.0. 
which this is so lame. Calling this 2.0 made me think, oh, this is like a replacement for the first game, but no, it's just, that's what they called it. All the 1.0 characters and power discs work in the toy box, but other than that, 2.0 is, in my opinion, a massive downgrade gameplay-wise. Instead of getting three playsets out of the box, you only get one, which is far lamer and shorter than just one of the three playsets included previously. In fact, there's only three playsets in general for 2.0, all of them Marvel-based, no Disney-related ones, which I feel like is a huge slap in the face to the initial supporters of the series. Yes, I think it's cool Marvel yeah, stuff is, is here, but that's all Disney Infinity 2.0 is, and frankly, I feel like it would have been more fitting to start a spin-off series just called Marvel Infinity. There were a few Disney characters released, only 11 with two being from Big Hero... And Big Hero 6 is actually Marvel. I mean, it is a Disney movie, but... It's a Marvel property, too. Stan Lee even makes an appearance in that film. An animated version of him, actually. Hero 6, which was a Marvel thing, though they labeled it as a Disney original because of the Disney animated film. And we did get some more legacy characters like Tinkerbell, Stitch, Maleficent, Aladdin, and Jasmine. A duck. A dirty f***ing duck. A stinky duck. There was a Disney Originals version of the starter pack. One without Marvel characters, if this was all you cared about. This came with some toy box games. Kind of a consolation prize if you wanted something non-Marvel to play with. Hmm. These are some games created in the toy box mode based on brave and lilo and stitch it's okay. kind of cool considering these were made within the level editor but it just hmm. feels like they didn't have enough development time between games i mean only three playsets and none of them disney related and this feels like they scrambled to put together something disney related to play on top of that man this game just doesn't run that well i'm on the wii u version so f me what? right but the controls just feel laggy frames drop consistently I don't know, man. This is a weak sequel. And they made some improvements here and there, like you can get crossover coins in the Marvel playsets, which huh. allows you to play as certain Marvel characters in Marvel playsets that weren't meant for them. That's stupid. I kind of get you want to keep the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Guardians of the Galaxy playsets so all the cutscenes include just the characters you'd expect to be there, or just the fact you'd want to keep the universes pure, but for the hmm. love of God, the premise of these games is that they're a bunch of toys. Well, I can at least kind of understand not having Donald Duck playable in the Avengers playset, not mm -hmm. being able to play as Spider-Man in the Avengers playset, or only being able to play as Iron Man in the Spider-Man playset after collecting the crossover coins. This is stupid. I'm sorry. Mm. The storyline here is that these are a bunch of toys. So why does it matter about keeping the universes pure? I just feel like the design of this game, at its core, kind of annoys me. Again, it's like three separate small shitty games available as a part of one, but you still have to buy the games in the form of toys. And this all makes sense when you consider that the playsets were all developed by different studios. And that was to keep the quality and quantity of content up. But they could have just made a fun game overall with one main campaign in a toy box mode rather than three separate campaigns that confuse the hell out of me in terms of what figures work where. Oh, I'm gonna use Black Widow in the Spider-Man playset. You can't say I didn't try. Sure, <laughs> the original characters work in the toy box, but nowhere else. It would have been great if the 1.0 playsets were here so you could just flat out replace your old Disney Infinity 1 game, but no, this doesn't feel like Disney Infinity. Honestly, this game has more limitations than you think. The Wii and 3DS missed out on this game, but Xbox One and PlayStation 4 got a taste of the action plus a playstation vita release in spring of 2015 this is just hmm. funny yeah so that was a huge waste of time yeah! <laughs> <laughs> competing with 2.0 was the fourth skylanders game trap team developed by toys for bob again the main gimmick this time around was being able to trap and control certain enemies with these things uh, you pop it into the portal to nab the enemy with a really cool effect uh, there's now a speaker on here so it really feels like the trap transports the character from the tv to the portal the complete huh. opposite of the feeling using the Skylanders invokes. This is another solid entry in the franchise, a fan favorite if you will. I think it does a good job expanding upon the quality that Swap Force instated. I mean, these animations look out of this world. It's obvious so much talent and money is being poured into this series now. Regardless of your stance on the Skylanders, you have to commend just how amazing this looks for a kid's game, let alone a kid's game in 2014. Outside of that, it's very it's just another Skylanders to me personally. I think the traps are cute, though not as rad as Swap Force's gimmick. I have somewhat similar yet less critical feelings about the traps to the power discs from Infinity. Like the Toys to Life concept can be sort of cool until you start having to buy things that just like, what do you expect me to do with this outside of the game? The figures you can display <laughs> those, play with them, but like, what do you expect me to do with this in the real world? But hey, it's another quality Skylanders release. Same consoles as before, plus a mobile version this time around. It comes with a unique portal and its own controller. It's pretty impressive because unlike something like Disney Infinity on 3DS, this was Skylanders Trap Team 
in its entirety. I can't play it anymore, it is a seven year old mobile game after all, but hmm. rest assured, I wouldn't if I could. But there's probably a good reason as to why they were able okay. to port this game to mobile, because they were still making a Wii version. Oh my God! The Wii version, strangely enough, comes with a download code for the Wii U version. So honestly, the best move would have been to buy the Wii starter pack. That way you would have gotten two versions for the same price as one. I think this was done because Nintendo leaned heavily into accepting the fact that the only third party support the Wii U was getting during this time was from these Toys to Life games. They advertised the that. hell out of these types. Nintendo did initially get some pretty good support by Ubisoft. I mentioned Rayman Legends. Uh, before that, a launch title was Zombie U. I might actually live stream that someday. I, I played through some of it, but not all of it. It's an interesting game. Um, and uh, although, don't quote me on that, odds are I probably won't be live streaming that game like at all. I still have my Wii U in the storage unit. Only console I have right now is the Switch. Um, I also have my 2DS, but I stopped playing that since getting my new Switch, <laughs> since replacing my Switch. And then, of course, uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag actually did have a Wii U port as well, so Ubisoft initially was pretty supportive, and it seemed to have paid off because when the Switch came out, there was, um, Mario and Rabbids, or whatever it's called. It's the games on Wii U which led them to trying this out on their own. Nintendo's Amiibo worked quite a bit different from the other Toys to Life they lines out required. at the time. That's Basically, cool they can make them. Amiibo for literally any game, any series, anything. In fact, anything that could be right behind you. <laughs> can you imagine? Coinciding with the release of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U on November 21st, 2014, Amiibo weren't necessarily a competitor to Disney Infinity and Skylanders, more so Nintendo capitalizing on the fact figures like this were becoming popular. Mm -hmm. Because Amiibo's in-game functionality was never up to par with the others, the Smash Bros. was the best use for Amiibo, and even yeah. then it wasn't very good. You basically train a CPU fighter, uh, you scan an Amiibo onto the NFC portion of the Wii U gamepad, and its use, functionality, and compatibility changed between games. Not only Nintendo games supported mm -hmm. Amiibo, but those Obviously. that did, I hope you like nothing. Nintendo made it very clear they wanted Amiibo support to be completely optional. You get simple bonuses for scanning an Amiibo, yeah. nothing massive. They didn't want to lock major content behind them like Skylanders or Disney Infinity were doing. However, this is very similar to Nintendo's various other stances they took with new endeavors. <laughs> we'll never charge money for downloadable content. I just Ooh. shot a kid in the face. Amiibo did go on to unlock pretty substantial content. In games like Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, they're actively required much like the other Toys to Life games. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Nintendo never People found a true that balance game. with Amiibo. It always felt like too little or too much. Either it just gave you like four coins or an entire mode is locked behind it. The amount of huh. games with Amiibo support is so vast, spanning multiple Nintendo consoles, games published by Nintendo, games not published by Nintendo, throughout so many years, that I don't think talking about the full-on history of Amiibo really fits our current discussion right now. Believe me, I've already talked about Amiibo, and you son of a bitch, I'll do it again. But Amiibo <laughs> isn't really all that similar to how the others we've been talking about operate. Nintendo focuses on these things being more so supplemental collectibles because that's how all the fans view them. Launching with the Smash Brothers line was the best and worst thing they could have done. It's great because best everybody was interested in Amiibo from the get-go. You have characters from every video game series known to man represented. But then when they were running out of Smash Brothers, characters. Waddle D. They struggled for a bit after the boom of popularity with the Smash Brothers line in 2014. They definitely overstocked various stores with lines of Amiibo that frankly weren't as popular, but yeah. as time went on, they figured that all out, and while Amiibo isn't as popular as it was back then, it's still a fairly consistent portion of Nintendo's business. Enough where they were willing to experiment with crossbreeding. 2015 brought us Skylanders Superchargers, back to being developed by Vicarious Don't Visions. This one's gimmick yeah. was racing. Alongside new Skylanders, you could buy vehicles, cars, boats, planes. These scanned into the game just like any other Skylander would, and the game itself featured a standard Skylanders adventure with racing missions thrown in here and there, plus an entirely separate racing mode. This is lame as hell. No kid is going, Dad, I want to be that when I grow up. The game itself is very in line with previous Skylanders games. I have no major problem with the game, but this is a pretty weak gimmick. This doesn't feel creative or innovative, or like they really brainstormed for weeks to figure out what they could do next. This feels like an agenda to sell more toys rather than something mm -hmm. magical, which is what you want with a product like this. Swap Force and Trap Team felt like that. The original Spyro's Adventure felt like that, but this gimmick is something you could have 
done with the first game. The cars are just cars. You just scan them in. I think it's pretty cool you can actually play with them as toys, but I think what made the previous two games so cool was the fact you kind of go, how did they do this? With this, it's literally like, yeah, the same technology in this Skylander is in this car. They're fundamentally the same thing. But of course, the Nintendo versions of this game featured exclusive guest characters, turbocharged Donkey Kong and Hammer Slam Bowser. <laughs> this is fucking nasty. Yes, Nintendo characters in the Skylanders art style. You might be saying, wow, I thought I'd hear you puke after that. No, you see, that's just what puke sounds like now. Interestingly, <laughs> these can switch between being amiibo figures and being Skylanders figures, which is a really cool touch. And overall, huh. they do a pretty good job fitting within the game. I think it's a little... Okay, so I'm assuming what that means is you switch it to Skylanders to play a Skylanders game, but you switch it to Amiibo to put it on the uh, NFC reader and use it in a Nintendo game. That's that's actually, that's interesting. Blame how these break the Skylanders tradition of everything works everywhere. Like all previous figures and gimmicks work on the next game and the game after that, and you can swap figures between consoles. Nope, these can only be used on Nintendo, but it's cool enough to get a pass from me. Donkey Kong was the pack-in for the Wii U version. Bowser came with the Wii and 3DS releases, which <laughs> were pared down games, only featuring the racing portion, no adventures. Skylanders, Superchargers, Racing. You know, after seeing how Trap Team on Wii turned out, I salute them for accepting the fact that Wii can't do everything. <laughs> Superchargers is another solid Skylanders, but just doesn't have a ton that's too awful compelling. This was a bit of a turning point. I think many mm. consumers stopped and looked at all of this thinking, is this really worth it? It's just another Skylanders game, and now with a racing portion to it. You could just buy Mario Kart 8 and Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U and get a similar amount of playtime and fun out of those, and that would cost significantly less. That's this true. game was where sales started to really decline, and that can be attributed to the gimmick just not being anything to write home about, but also just how many Toys to Life games were popping up. 2015 mm -hmm. was the biggest year for Toys to Life series. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm so suffocating we can finish the job if you want yep one more tours to life series you got the toys oh i've got leprosy <laughs> you think disney entering the toys to life sphere was expected try lego i think everybody had the idea of like imagine a standard lego game but it's toys to life and you scan in the actual lego figurines it just made perfect sense so when lego dimensions was announced in april of 2015 the world just went yeah no shit. but the way they were doing it oh God, this had potential. Warner Brothers was going all over the place, utilizing their own IPs, getting the rights to ones that were just out there, like The Simpsons, wow. Back to the Future, Portal 2, and making them universes in this game. It was all about being a giant crossover between series that were already popular Lego games, series that had Lego sets, series that had never had Lego sets before. This was just wow. a giant excuse to bring together countless franchises that you would have never expected in a million years to see crossover. Batman, Lord of the Rings, the Lego Movie, Harry Potter, Ghostbusters, Ooh. Doctor Who, The Wizard of Oz, The A-Team, Adventure Time, Scooby-Doo, Goonies, Beetlejuice, Gremlins, Sonic the Hedgehog. And the game was a typical <laughs> Lego adventure, a much stuff. like a Lego Star Wars or Lego Harry Potter or Lego Batman game, but with each level and world from a different franchise. It was like what I wanted Disney Infinity to be, but even crazier considering the diversity of franchises they had under their belt. How did they f*** it up? So Lego Dimensions is half Lego set, half Lego video game. The starter pack comes with Batman, Gandalf, and Wildstyle, the Batmobile, and the portal base, all needing to be put together. This is one of the best parts of LEGO Dimensions, the real-life aspect of having to put the LEGOs together. I mean, technically speaking, you don't need to, because all you need is the bases the characters, objects, and vehicles connect to. Huh. That's what the portal reads. Without them, these are just regular everyday LEGO toys, which is really cool. Makes okay. traveling with them a bitch, though. The other <laughs> toys you could very easily just toss in your bag and bring them over to a friend's house. LEGO Dimensions, after one stomp, it's toast. Some instructions are given with the starter pack, but these packs sold separately? None of them <laughs> came with them. You always have to go in-game to figure out had to build them, which didn't make much sense hmm. to me. These extra packs are just genuine Lego. You have a chance to sell this to Lego Dimensions owners or just people who want the minifigures. But hmm. you're not gonna include instructions? So these you don't include instructions for and you have to access them in-game. But these included with the game have paper instructions as well as in-game instructions. Like, what? Why include paper instructions with the ones that come with the game while the ones that don't come with the game don't get anything? It would also be nice to have paper instructions just so you could build everything before you start the game up rather than turn the game on and spend 30 minutes building Legos. <laughs> but popping all these things on the portal, we can play the game. And at its core, Lego Dimensions is incredibly similar to previous Lego games, but now you're forced to buy the extra characters. Mm -hmm. Though they all have unique abilities, which sweetens the pot a little bit. I don't know. The three starter pack characters' abilities all just kind of feel like an excuse to give each character work 
worth. It's like Wild Style hmm. is the only master builder, so she can build more complex Lego objects in the game. But I'm just like, why can't I just do that as any character I'm controlling? It's not cool to be like, oh, only Wild Style can build this object. Let me switch over to her. This is f***ing awesome. But that I can tolerate. What I can't is the fact the game forces you to clumsily move the figures around on the portal to complete certain puzzles. Anybody that knows me will tell you, never tell Scott to move Legos around on a glowing portal. I absolutely hate this. So portals appear in the game and you have to swap the characters around to the corresponding colors. But one of your characters might be already on the color you need to swap to. So you have to lift that one up, but that might take them away from the game. So you have to be quick. But then there's this color matching game that I just couldn't get to work properly. And the effect isn't even cool. It doesn't feel like I'm trapped traveling through different portals or dimensions by moving this character to a different part of the base. It forces you to be super close to the portal when you're playing and when it's wired, there's only so many TV setups this works with. The levels themselves weren't interesting at all to me. I'm sorry, I found them tedious and slow. It was difficult to tell what to do a lot since you have a maximum of seven characters to switch between. So it's always an act of, okay, uh, this character can't do anything for me to progress past this point. Uh, neither can this one. Uh, for some reason, this one works, so uh, now I have to move these f***ers around. Everything from the game design to the real life design feels clunky and making something so simple, so needlessly complex. It's like they felt the need to differentiate this from regular Lego games, so they tacked on gimmicks that just slow the game down and frustrate rather than inspire and shock and awe. Skylanders felt like you're taking the character and transporting them into the video game. Disney Infinity felt like you were unlocking content by placing the figure on the base. Lego Dimensions feels like a shell of a regular Lego game that's more expensive and has useless gimmicks attached that don't work. Now I'm playing the Wii U version to which many would say, Sky, you can't play that version. It's the buggiest edition of the game. You should play the PS4 version. Honey, I just don't think I like this game. It's a shame because the concept here is easily the coolest, most justified toys to life experience yet. All the IPs they have covered here, it's one of the craziest crossovers I've ever seen. The yeah. characters even have specific dialogue towards one another when you put them together. And on oh, top of that, cool. most of the characters are fully voiced by their original actors. Barely no. any sound alikes are used unlike Disney Infinity. You have level packs containing a character, object, vehicle, and a bonus level in that character's world. Plus the vehicle can be reworked in three different ways, which is pretty awesome. Fun packs don't have any levels, just characters and objects. Story packs have handfuls of levels based on movies you can play, kind of replacements for regular LEGO games based on these IPs. And instead of making sequels, they opted to just continually update LEGO Dimensions instead, meaning this game got a few years worth of new figures and levels released. That was it's smart. Nice, but it does take away a lot of it for me personally. When I put the Sonic figure on the base and then have to go into the download content manager to download the Sonic level, that takes away so much of the joy and magic of the toys to life concept these figures are quite literally keys to unlock content in the game that's how it's always been, but they're not even trying to hide it with this game. It doesn't feel like you're bringing these characters to life, which I think is the big selling point of a game like this for kids. Couple that with how the starter pack was $100 and something like a level pack was 30. That's f***ed up. I know Lego Jeez. itself is expensive, but you do get a fun experience out of that putting it all together. But when you translate this over to video games, Lego Dimensions gives you three characters in a game that's just as long as any of the other standalone LEGO games, which can give you hundreds of playable characters and level design not focus on shoehorn portal gimmicks for 60 or less. The Sonic hmm. level pack is worth half of a complete LEGO game. You do get LEGO with it, but still, it's just not worth it. Well, there was one major LEGO IP that didn't make the cut in dimensions, and that was because it was the tentpole feature for Disney Infinity 3.0. That's a weird way to spell fucking goofy. Yeah, 2015 <laughs> was when Star Wars was coming back hard with The Force Awakens, and with it being the other big acquisition Disney made around that time, it just made sense with Infinity 2.0 being themed around Marvel. But while 2.0 was pretty lackluster in my opinion, 3.0 feels like Disney Infinity was finally starting to click. It's the exact okay. same format as before, play sets and toy box, though they went for a far bigger variety this time around. We got play sets for not only Star Wars, but Marvel. Marvel and Disney originals as well. They started to dig deeper and offer more classic Disney characters there like go, Baloo finally. and Vanilla Mickey Mouse. It took three damn games to get Mickey. The playsets mostly focused on Star Wars, but there was a Marvel multiplayer fighter playset and a couple Disney themed ones, Inside Out, Finding Dory. There was nice. even some Toy Box games that were way more fleshed out than the ones from 2.0, like Toy Box <laughs> Speedway, a racing game. That was the Lone Ranger in Sugar Rush on Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> How about that?
game where you can play as any Disney Infinity character you want. And everything just feels way more polished than before. The toy box, I gotta be honest, being able to play as any Disney Infinity character from 1, 2, and 3, it makes it so much more fun. There I'm kicking go. Iron Man's ass as Baloo. <laughs> he can run around as Donald f***ing Duck versus a Star Wars character, add on some flying vehicles and weapons. Disney Infinity 3.0 ain't that bad. I think they put a ton of effort into this iteration and gave it their all. You still can't use previous playsets from older games. I think that's hmm. kind of the one thing that stings for me. But 3.0 was set to be a long-lasting game. Instead of developing a 4.0 the next year, Disney opted to release updates for 3.0. You can tell what the newer figures are by the internet symbol on the package, indicating hmm. that blue is a privilege, not a right. They had hmm. lots of plans for this game, and the future seemed bright. Guess where I'm going with this? In May of 2016, from what seemed out of nowhere, just eight months after 3.0 released, Disney announced their discontinuation of the Disney Infinity franchise. Mm. It was shocking because they just released figures and playsets along with announcing plans for future content. Disney Infinity was always a decent success, but not enough to have six developers on the project with over 40 figures released just for this game alone. Infinity was ambitious, but not sustainable. Disney wanted it to be a platform, a place you want to get games based on Disney properties, but did that really make much sense? There are over 100 million PS4 owners, and if you're making an inside out game, why limit it to an install base of only those who bought the game with Anakin Skywalker on the front? Why limit it to the confines of the Disney Infinity engine and playstyle? Why lock it behind toys when if you just want to sell toys, just sell toys, and if you want to sell games, just sell games? It mm. felt like Disney Infinity yeah. wasn't developed as a toys to life game at first, but then they forced it into it. But with a game like Skylanders, that felt more genuine. Sure, they were still trying to sell you this junk, but it felt more justified. At least with 3.0, Disney started to package the power discs in regular packaging so you knew exactly what you were gonna get, and the starter pack initially sold for only $64.99, which frankly, wasn't that bad. I mean, you were still only getting one small portion of the game and only two characters in one playset, but hey, it could be worse. Disney it's not only Star canceled Wars, future Wars. plans for Infinity, but closed Avalanche and Disney Interactive in the process. There were loads of figures and playsets in development that just poof. Starting then, Disney decided to just license out their properties to different developers and publishers, mm. to which we got Cars 3 driven to win just one year later. Some things must die for some to live. This was a bit of a bummer considering 3.0 had loads of potential. It seemed like things were finally going to start to ramp up for Infinity. Cats and dogs getting along together, mass hysteria. I, I, I just Disney, a Disney game developed by Warner Brothers. That's just crazy to think about. Cause I remember growing up, it seemed like Disney and Warner Brothers had like this rivalry, and they still kind of do. I mean, those who are way older now, most who are actually not alive today, um saw Warner Brothers um, come up with Bugs Bunny, who was like the antithesis of Mickey Mouse from Disney. It, it, they were competitors, for sure. Um, with their cartoons, their movies. I mean, Warner Brothers has owned DC Comics for, like, since, like, since, like, the 70s, and now with Disney owning the MCU, and even... Uh, you know, owning Fox, so they own the X-Men too. Like, now Disney and Warner Brothers are competing in that way as well. You know, it's kind of like how um, in the 2000s, uh, Pepsi bought Gatorade, and then sometime around that time, I guess, Coca-Cola came up with uh, Powerade, and now they're, and now Coke and Pepsi are not just competing with sodas, but they're competing with sports drinks. I think in that regard, Pepsi's definitely winning because Gatorade's way better than Powerade. Um, but the thing is, like, wow, um, it's crazy. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, when I grew up in the 90s, Nintendo and Sega were giant rivals, and now, you know, there's Sega games on Nintendo consoles. It's been like that for the majority of my life at this point, I think. Um, but, I mean, it's at first it was crazy to think about. Um, and now, a Disney property is being published by Warner... is being developed by Warner Bros. Games. Like, that's, that's crazy. I just never thought I'd see that. Then again... 
Okay. <laughs> I guess it kind of makes sense as Disney's not doing Disney Interactive anymore. Let's see, Aladdin, Yoda, and Rocket Star in canceled Disney Infinity 4.0 footage. Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Plus, there were plans for a 4.0, which would lean way more into the crossover element, featuring a campaign of sorts with all the characters. However, it was either that or Cars 3 driven to win. They chose what they chose. Uh. The company saw that Toys to Life, while it still could lead to success, was a declining market. 2015 mm -hmm. had three major competitors doing very similar things on top of Amiibo. Customers were justifiably finding that buying these games every year was too expensive, not worth it. Their living rooms were clogged. It was an oversaturated market. It's, they shouldn't have been releasing them every year. Should have been several years apart. Maybe it would still be around, but releasing them every year was just way too much. A new game with a bunch of new figures, that's just too much. People have justified it buying a new Madden every year, even though I think that's ridiculous, because you're buying a brand new game that's barely different than the one before every year. Um, all you have to really do is just update the rosters to match what they are in the next game, and then you have the newest game on the previous one. <laughs> Although, that would take forever to update every single player and shit, though. <clears throat> And these games were fundamentally replacements for traditional licensed kids' games. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to get your kid a game based on a movie they liked, or just a child-friendly game in general, in 2015, there wasn't a ton of options if you weren't on a Nintendo platform that weren't toys to life. So, hmm. Disney backed out, leaving just LEGO Dimensions and Skylanders. Dimensions continued to release new level, story, and fun packs alongside content updates for the original game, while Skylanders stuck to their usual format, and in 2016, we got Skylanders Imaginators. Eh, kind of similar story to Superchargers. Well done game, it's just more Skylanders, now with mm. the gimmick of creating your own character with these creation crystals. You save it to them, and now this is a Skylander. You can bring it over to a friend's house, another console version of the game. That's really neat, but much like Superchargers, this isn't really a, whoa, how are you doing that moment? Half of the fun of Skylanders is having the characters as figures, and when you just have a generic thing like this be your figure, mm. it's basically just a memory card at that point, so it's not like the greatest basically, thing in the yeah. world. And by this point in the game, it was obvious Disney was right. Toys to Life has declined and wasn't as appealing anymore. The magic was gone as it was milked dry by every company. It was tough to be wowed by putting the toy on the portal and seeing it appear in the game, when everybody else had already done it multiple times over at this point. Skylanders are still the best of the main three, though. I never care for the gameplay, but my god, I at least have to commend their passion and faithfulness. All the hmm. characters, all the gimmicks from previous games, work here. You can use the Giants, the Swap Force characters, the Traps from Trap Team, the Vehicles from Superchargers, even Donkey Kong and Bowser still work on the Nintendo versions. And all of yeah, these Skylanders cool. look different from their original appearances. They went in and updated them all with new animations, sometimes models. That is commitment and impressive. Though the Nintendo Switch version which came out at the system's launch on March 3rd, 2017. It doesn't come with a portal. They decided to just use the NFC on the system, which was something I asked for on the Wii U. But now I know why they didn't do it. The traps and vehicles aren't huh. compatible. Scanning the figures is far more bitchy than it ever was with the portal. It was way easier to just have the portal pop the figure on and leave it there. Now it's riddled with menus and button prompts. and This, this is the worst version of the game. You can still use okay. the Nintendo characters, but frankly, it kind of seems the Wii U version is definitive as you can use the characters and the vehicles and traps. Imaginators okay. <laughs> was the last of the mainline Skylanders games during its initial run, and it kind of feels like they almost knew that going in. I know they didn't, as there were plans for more Skylanders Imaginators content and even a game following it, but just the fact that the gimmick is, we're giving you the ability to make your own Skylander. Villains throughout the series are now playable via their own figures. A spiral plays a big part in the intro of the game, which kind of feels like we're coming full circle. They made a Crash <laughs> Bandicoot figure in level, which is a really cute form of fan service. The figures themselves are are huge they were pretty expensive this time around but they really made them super high quality and i they don't are. know this feels like a fitting conclusion to the series but even if it was never meant to be that the game sold quite poorly it was obvious the fad was over yeah or was it
Yes. Ubisoft announced plans for their own Toys to Life game at E3 2017. Starlink Battle for Atlas. The crotch is on these guys. After everybody else was obliterated, these guys swung into E3 announcing a spaceship game with toys. It released in 2018 for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, with the Nintendo Switch version coming with Star Fox content, which meant Makes sense. nobody played it on PS4 and Xbox. You connect your controller to this shell and then connect these different ships and weapons to it alongside this little figure of your pilot. So... This does feel a bit magical, like it's huh. pretty wicked trying this out for the first time. There's no batteries or wires or anything, just snap it on and everything appears in game. Very impressive, huh. but after that, I'm good. The game controls well, it looks good, but it's really repetitive. Just fly around, get into dogfights, deliver things. The world can mm. feel kind of barren and not super interesting. It's okay, but not worth spending hundreds of dollars on. I think Ubisoft knew this considering they sold a digital version of the game that did not require any of the toys, and after <laughs> a bit, they stopped selling the toys altogether and just supported the game with updates until dropping it altogether. Much like the others, I can tell this is quality, and the Toys to Life aspect does enhance the experience to some extent. It's really cool. But after that first time playing it, I don't care to go back to this. It's not a bad game, just not one that I'd ever play without a gun to my head. When they started out, you can understand how these games felt really cool. But after nearly 10 years of their existence, they have to do some crazy stuff to warrant their existence now. Because after a while, by 2015, Toys to Life lost its magic and instead it just felt exploitative. The prices of these things don't lie. Nobody wants them anymore. In the end, most of these were just a complete waste. There. I, I wasted. Ah, there's still more that can be done. Hey, uh, hand me that disposable cup of water. This is glass. Yep. See, that's the spirit. If you need any more Skylander starter packs, Dex is willing to offload those onto you for half your regular price. This has all been free so far. This offer goes away at midnight. It's two in the morning. <laughs> I'll extend it to next year. What kind of business are you running here? How do you make money? Why is your boss 14? 13, you ass. Well, we don't make money. We make up for an age. He said 14 earlier. Does Scott just guess the age and the guy always guesses an, a year younger? <laughs> the guy always corrects him with a year younger. These calculations. Yeah, I have two birthdays. I have none. You have no birthdays? Doesn't seem very wasteful. Eh, saves money on a gift. Wait! The waste chasers don't exist! This is just a front! I prefer the term <laughs> that this was a front. Destroy the evidence. You are just scamming innocent people looking to waste their time and money into taking your garbage for free. I wasn't trying to be malicious. Okay. I was trying to help out my cousin Dex. For his 12th birthday coming up, he wanted room for more Skylanders figures, so I had to find a way to get rid of the old ones. What am I supposed to do? The dump won't take these. Uh, Wait, this is a scam? You son of a bitch! Now I'm <laughs> stuck with them, all because you have a cousin? Is it a bad time to say I have multiple? These things are worthless! <laughs> Nobody buys them anymore! What am I supposed to do with them now? I can see if Dex wants them. Rex, you're a disgrace to the force. I joined this company because I have a passion for waste, not because I was duped by a nine-year-old. I think he's turning seven next fall. If you're gonna treat this waste with respect, Keeps I'm gonna treat it like garbage it's always meant to be. Jab farms. It's a title, not a command. Well, that was a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, the only Toys to Life platform I ever got into at the time was Amiibo, and even then it was pretty begrudgingly. Same here. But looking back at everything, while these things are rotting on clearance shelves and in landfills for a reason, they still brought joy to millions of players. They were a waste, but they still had some purpose. Oh, technically speaking, they had more use than most regular figurines. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, none of these <laughs> games are necessarily my thing, and locking in-game content from an already overpriced game behind figures sold separately leads to a huge waste of time and money on the customer's end. The Waste Chaser showed yeah, me great. that even some of the biggest wastes of energy on the planet exist for a reason. <laughs> to exploit young children and give landfills a purpose. Even God has epiphanies. <laughs> oh, yeah, make a wish. That's awesome. Well, that was a doozy. It was a really, really long video. I did not expect it to be as long as it was, but anyway, um, that said, I'm glad I watched it. It was quite a joy to watch it all the way through. 
Um, <clears throat> not really that much I could really add to it. I mean, I pretty much agree with everything Scott said. Uh, like him, I just used Amiibos because they were completely optional. And they're like, uh, what was it? How much were they at the time? Like 14, 15 bucks or 13 bucks? I forget. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it was kind of cool um, going against my Amiibo on Smash Bros. Uh, I actually have some videos from back in like 2014, 2015. I forget what year. I think it was 2015. Yeah, it was 2015. <clears throat> and um, of uh, my friends and I, my then friends and I, taking on uh, my Kirby Amiibo, which I named The Blob, based off of that horror film. Um, my Sonic Amiibo just call him the blue blur that's his nickname and even in a mario amiibo who i just called alpha dog <clears throat> all different you know uh, strengths and weaknesses um because primarily their attack and defense were up it was really hard to take them down um i had to also of course increase speed so they can recover too but uh there was less of it so their jumps were not as good but whatever um the blob had uh, an explosive shield so that if he perfectly timed his shield and you hit him, it would, it, an explosion would happen that would damage you. <laughs> um, he had something else, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, Blue Blur had a healing shield, so every time you hit him when he shielded, he actually recovered health. He also had uh, automatic health regeneration, so he would recover health every like five seconds, I think. Like, I like a little bit, it was like three damage or something. Um, and then uh, Alpha Dog had, not, his his were not as interesting. Like, if he got the first hit, he's invincible for like 10 or 20 seconds or whatever. And then um, I, there were other ones, but I don't remember. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, this is quite a joy to watch from Scott the Waz. Uh, quite a long one. <laughs> But um, that said, I'm going to actually have to go. i got you know, errands to run, work to do. But um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell icon to add me notifications. I appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for some more React videos. Stay tuned for that uh, was it crossover. Not cr oh, Well, I keep thinking the word crossover because... You know, crossovers are all over this episode, but I mean, uh, collab uh, between me and uh, another YouTuber that's coming up. And um, I do have some original content planned. I just have to actually have time to write the scripts for them and so on. Um, but I've been very busy with work, also busy with uh, other things. But anyways, thank you so much. Have a good one.